on me, Jesus. He knows where you're at tonight. Sing, Rachel. He counts the stars one and all. He knows how much sand is on the shore. He sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything. Of all creatures, great and small. He knows my name. Every step that I take. Every move that I make. Every tear that I cry. He knows my name. When I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by the pain. I can't see the light of Let's go. Everybody, let's go. We're going to sing a little bit this morning. Everybody get your hymn book. Turn to number 337. Number 337. Uh, everybody get your book now. We're going to sing a little bit this morning. And this is about the storm. Reckon it's going to rain. Uh, that's what it's about this morning. Number 337 for the rest of you that have not stood yet and not got your hymn book. Let's all stand. Uh, let's all stand and sing this morning. You ready? Everybody ready? All right, play. Hey, man, number 337, let's all sing. Sing it out now. The Lord's our rock, in him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill be tied. A shell of storm. Sing, oh, Jesus is the rock. A weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, in the weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Number 337. Number 337. Hey, he's up in the weary land, a weary land, he's in a weary shelter in the time of storm. Good. Three aging storms may round us be. He's a shelter time of storm. Will neighbors tree a shelter in the time of oh, the rock in a weary land, the weary land, land. Oh, Jesus is the rock, weary land, a shelter in the time of good. On the last number four, oh, rock did. It mine, oh dear, a shelter in the time of be thou our head. Shelter in storm, sick. Oh, Jesus is the rock in the weary land, land, land. Oh, Jesus is the rock in the weary land. 
and shelter in the time or now just remain standing. That ought to take on new meaning to you today. You know, just like this building here, it's what Jesus is when you're going through a storm in your life. He's the rock in a wheel. All right. You can be seated. Uh, Lord bless you for coming today. I'm uh, really glad to see you here. Several people said I cannot have got out and come to church on a day like that. Crazy. Design. But it's good to be here. You might as well be on uh, uh, today. Uh, we're going to enjoy the Lord. Uh, um, I have got phone calls from all over the country. Uh, down in from Florida. Uh, and and one, are y'all all right? Are y'all all right? And I thought, that's sort of weird, isn't it? People from Florida had, had two or three people from Florida saying if we needed a place to stay, that, that we was welcome to come and stay with them. <laughs> How messed up does that sound? But uh, anyway, we're really glad that you're here this morning, and we do want to pray seriously. The people that's had some rough days, especially down east, uh, the families that have, uh, number one, of course, would be a loss of life. Uh, there's several people lost their lives in and because of this storm that we're having. And uh, so let's pray for them, their families, that the Lord will comfort them. I can't imagine anything that bad. That that one lady who hit that tree, uh, she didn't see it. Tree blew over and she hit it. She was killed. And then the house, the tree that fell on the house with a lady and a baby, it just that especially touched my heart. So please, let's pray for them, uh, whoever they are, where they are, people that's lost uh, uh, property, cl houses, cars, whatever, but especially uh, human life. Uh, let's remember them in prayer this morning. And um, let's don't forget now, uh, we have full schedule of service. We'll be back tonight. It's going to be good. We've got something else planned for tonight, special. So don't miss it. I want to say thank you for being out here. We actually had a good crowd on the buses this morning, uh, believe it or not. Uh, some of the parents would not let kids come, but believe it or not, we actually had a good crowd on the buses today. So that speaks highly. Um, a, lot of, uh, that, a lot of people say, you're not going to run them buses. If you said, if you'd done that every Sunday, we'd never run them. It's always something. It's always something. So praise the Lord for bus workers faithfully got your job done. And uh, we thank the Lord for you. And those kids are going to be back there this morning learning about the greatest thing in life. The greatest thing in life is not how far you can advance or what you own or who you are. The greatest thing in life is being ready when he calls you out of here. It's not down here. It's up there. So, all right, we're going to we're gonna move quick today, and we're going to try to let you out a little bit earlier than normal. Uh, we've got a lot of folks that are gone, couldn't get out, obviously, uh, but we also uh, want you to get a blessing. So we're going to move quick today, probably not have any special singing. Maybe the choir sing one right quick, so everybody be ready for that. But we're going to have a little time of fellowship. We actually have folks here that have fled the hurricane and come here. Uh, uh, but uh, Coach Tim's family over there, them ladies, glad to have them. There's these folks back here with Miss Karen and others that come from that way come here. And, uh, you know, I get texts, and I say, you know, they say, ain't it bad? And we always... We never think about from Winston-Salem on. We don't even think about that being North Carolina. That ain't right. But that's in our mind, our half is North Carolina. That half messed up long, years ago. But uh, we ought to pray for them and be concerned about them. We're glad that you're all here this morning. Okay? All right, let's be friendly. Everybody stand. Turn around and be friendly in the Lord. Make all of our visitors welcome this morning. Turn around there and be friendly to somebody right now.
All right, choir, come on. Bring somebody with you. We need help this morning. Need a little help. All of you girls, come on. Yeah, Deacons over here. Oh, girl, we're gonna sing one this morning. Three seventeen. Uh, we're having to improvise here a little bit today. Uh, but Jason, Miss Crystal's in Florida. Ain't that something? Picked a good time to go. All right. So what we'll do is we'll have our deacons sing one for you this morning and lead on this course because we're gonna try to improvise just a little bit and. Uh, is it true, uh, Stefan, that this young lady here has a water slide at her house in the yard? Oh, we're going to have a water slide. We're all going to their house. As soon as, soon as we get to eating dinner today, water slide. She's got her own. It would be a good time. You wouldn't have to wet it. Wouldn't have to have the hose on it. Just jump on there and have fun. So, so if anybody, you charging for this, brother? Anybody wants to come and slide? Is it just in grass or are you going to have some? Huh? For real? Cool. All right. That sounds good, don't it? Maybe the buses might swing by there on their way home. <laughs> All right. Uh, girls, y'all ready? I need your help now. Uh, get that out of the mic. Number 317. It's going to be our deacons. They're going to help me sing this. Ready? All right. All right. Uh, real loud now. Ready? Sing. I've left the old past. I travel so long. All right, amen. 
Amen. Just remain standing now for our offering. I hope that everybody will give, honor the Lord, um, and, and obey Him this morning. If you're behind, good time to get caught up right here today. You're bound, some of y'all bound to be. You're bound to be. Uh, so let's, let's uh, everybody do what we're supposed to. God will honor that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we're so thankful that your love lights the way for us. We pray that you'd bless this offering today. Oh God, bless this money and multiply it, Lord, for your glory and your work on this earth. Help it to reach souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless every person who gives today, those that may not even have anything to give. Bless them. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Get your seat. Settle down, please. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and start early this morning and try to get you out of here in case, in case it is maybe getting a little, little rough. Uh, but I appreciate you being here. Uh, most churches didn't even have church today, so we're glad that you came. The Lord will bless what you do. He weighs why you do it and who you do it for. So pays to do right. Acts chapter 27 this morning. This We're going to look at a hurricane in the Bible since that's what you're all thinking about anyway. And I want to preach about it this morning. The hustle here was in a storm. It was, here's an outline. It was a big one. It was a bad one. And it was a bold one. It was wind and Rain. Let's look at Acts chapter 27 and verse 15. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we left. Somebody said that's the first case in the Bible of the woman driver. I didn't write that. I'm just saying that's what somebody said. What happened? She hit the rocks and the insurance went up. But anyway, anyway, just kidding. Um, it said in verse 14, not long after there arose a, against a tempestuous wind called Eurocliden or Euro. See that Euro and C-Y-L? That's like cyclone. See that word in there? Eurocliden, Eurocladon. And them winds were, that wind were, was in that part of the country in the Mediterranean Sea in the fall or winter. It's a typhoon. Cyclone. When I was in Haiti many years ago preaching, it would everything was all tore up. They'd had one come through there, and then people called it a cyclone. They said the cyclone came. The cyclone, cyclone, and our, our word would be hurricane. Now the Bible said in verse number uh, chapter twenty-eight. Look at chapter twenty-eight and verse three. It said, "And Paul gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, and there came a viper out of their hand." And got on his and fastened on his hand. But look what coals caused that. Verse two, the bottom said the present rain and the cold. So it was cold. It was pouring the rain, and the wind was blowing so hard that it broke a ship. Now that's a bad one. That's a bad one. And I want to talk about hurricanes this morning and preach on the subject lessons from the storm. There's some lessons we can learn from a storm. You know why God lets storm come? You know why? Environmentalists tell us because we 
burn trash out in the yard. Uh, some people would say it's because we, uh, you know, this, that, 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 those people are crazy. Uh, and there's always been storms. And as long as we're on this one, there will always be storms. Sin caused all the bad stuff in the world to happen. We're a, we're a fallen creatures. We're a fallen world. You know what's wrong with you this morning? You've got something wrong with you. I've got something wrong with me. Have you noticed that? Have you Anybody who's ever raised kids knows there's something wrong with the human race. Some ain't right. That's why they kill each other. That's why they hate each other. That's why they uh, try to uh, step on each other because of sin. So storms come. Storms come here today to show us a picture of storms that come in our life. You ever heard anybody come in and they'll say, man, I'm going through a storm. Pray for me. Now, they don't mean the wind. It could be sunshine. They mean there's trouble. They're going through trouble. So this message today is for anybody having trouble. Anybody in here having trouble? That's a dumb question, isn't it? Uh, uh, anybody in here having any kind of problems? A storm in your life. That's who it's for. Now, let's talk about hurricanes for a minute. What is one? What they do? The deadliest hurricane in our history was in 1900, September of 1900, this month, September, there were 8 to 15 foot waves in Galveston, Texas. 8,000 people were killed. That was a bad one. Now, they said that was the worst weather disaster ever in the United States at that time. Uh, but they didn't have the warning devices like we have now. I mean, they couldn't track it four days before it got here and warn everybody. It caught them off guard. In 1928, in Okeechobee, the hurricane, 3,500 people were killed. And in 2005, over 1,000 were killed by Katrina in, in New Orleans because, them, uh, you know, the hurricane was there and it was bad. Then them levees broke and flooded. That's what caused all the bad problems then. In 1893, there were um, a hurricane that caused a thousand deaths uh, in, in way back before 1900. There have been three Category Five hit uh, hit the hit our coast. I mean, there were five when they hit. This one was a one when it hit. There were five. There were three Category Fives in history. In 1935, down in the Florida Keys on, and near Labor Day. 1969 in Mississippi, that was uh, Camille and Hurricane Andrew in Dade, Florida in 1992. What makes a hurricane? I, I read that they said, first of all, the water has to be 80 degrees uh, or, or there, right in there about. Very warm. That's why I don't have hurricanes in California. They swirl around down in in the below the eastern part of the United States, right over that Bermuda Triangle. We'll talk about that another time. And then things swirl, then storms begin to start. And what happens is the water is uh, uh, very warm, extremely warm water, and it and it sort of uh, the wind begins to blow, and it creates a funnel like like a suction, and the earth spinning puts a twist on it like that, and that wind begins to whirl around and around and around. They tell us that a strong hurricane lifts, are you listening? 60 million tons of water. And Lord, we, they've been 20 million of it on North Carolina uh, just in the, last, in the last few days. So 60 million tons of water. They have a, a hurricane like we saw before it got here, out there in the water, has more power in 10 seconds than the entire United States of America uses in one year. I don't know how they calculated that, but that's what uh, they tell us. Scientists tell us that. So it, it ain't nothing to mess around with, to say the least. There are three things of nature man can't do anything with. Water, wind, and fire. And when them three are out of control... You better just head for the hills and pray the Lord will have mercy on you, buddy, because it's, uh, I mean, it doesn't heavy, heavy hang over your head. And so, um, uh, oh, I, I didn't tell you about the big one. We ain't got time to preach about that. You know the biggest one in history, don't you? Noah's flood. Now, that was a big one. 
Uh, I can imagine the, the, the forecasters in that day. Had they been forecasters in that day, Lord, as, the, as little clouds come up, the fountains of the deep opened up, water squirted up out of, the, out of the middle of the earth. I mean, out of the ground, water fell out of the sky. I mean, all you know what broke loose. Uh, here's, what, here's the way you'd forecast that. It was a category 500 probably. Uh, I mean, wouldn't you say about a 500? And uh, I, I, I figured out uh, in my office, uh, the, I was figuring out a multiplying. If Mount Everest is 14,000 feet, they were forecasting 168,000 inches of rain. There's brother. I ain't never been one like it since and never was before. That, that, that's, that's what a storm is. Now, when storms come, I want to give you three little thoughts here today, and I'll leave it with you. Number one, number one, remember this. The storms of life teach us that you, you realize then that God is in control. Somebody bigger than me and you has got to be running this universe. God is in control. They signs us, we're really not anything. Physical storms, financial storms, marital storms, spiritual storms. I mean, like it's like this. When you, you start hurting somewhere, you start hurting somewhere, and then you think you're in good health, and you go to the doctor, and the doctor runs tests, and he said, we found something. We're going to have to send that off for a biopsy and bring it back. And you get real nervous. You go back about a week later. They say the results of your test are here. You go in there. The doctor comes in. He sits down. He says, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but it's cancer. I mean, people hear that every day, all in a, you talk about a storm. You talk about everything in your life being turned upside down. You talk about, and ladies and gentlemen, you never know when a storm like that will hit your life or mine. Old Bo that used to sit right there behind Donna. Uh, old Bo was 36 years old, 37. He started hurting right here in his leg. And that boy, I mean, he is healthy as a bear. Big old strong, tough boy. And he started hurting right in here. And he went to the doctor and had a tumor. And, and they told him it's cancer. And it just completely, completely. Uh, so you can exercise. You can take vitamins. You can do, you don't know. You don't know when, that, when that's going to happen to you. He went to the doctor and they took that one out. And there's another in his shoulder. Took that one out, and there's nothing over here. Nothing in his head. They started coming up all over him. And I went over there and prayed with him in hospice before he went home to be with the Lord. And oh, buddy, I mean, he'd sit right there in so much pain that he couldn't hardly stand it. Storm con. Storm con. I heard about an old preacher that came home one day, and he thought everything was all right, and he found a letter on the table from his wife saying, I don't love you no more. I'm not going to live with you no more. That's how quick you can go from sunshine to a bad storm in your life. Everything is turned upside down. I've heard of people uh, uh, doing real good and prospering on their job. Walk in one day, the boss calls them in there and say, I'm sorry, the, the, the plant is closing. You're unemployed. You're out of a job. Storm. Storms come. I've been through a few storms in my life. Uh, 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 not as much as some people, but the Lord has allowed storms to come to my life. And I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing when you realize, you know, when you, when you realize that this is totally out of my control. I mean, if anything fixes this, God has to fix it. God's the only one can do anything about this. Isn't it strange? I'll tell you something. Isn't it strange that right now, while uh, it's not as bad out there as they, they said, it might get worse the evening. But right now, you look out there and it looks awful. Trees are blowing over like that. Water is falling. Things. Ugh, what an ugly day. It's hard to believe right now that there are people in Florida and people in and all over out west and, and on the beach sitting there, not a cloud in the sky, enjoying themselves and just calm. It's hard to believe that's happening right now. We think good night, ever the whole world's gone uh, when we see it. I and mean, that's the way life is. Sometimes, sometimes people are going through a storm and everything might be great in your life. But the person sitting beside you might be going through something really, really bad. I'll never forget uh, hearing that guy tell about years ago uh, those traffic controllers in them, those little airports. He used to have these traffic controllers. And they had radar screens there, and they were keeping track over all the, the planes that they had up in the air. 
And they said that traffic controller, he'd, there'd be a big old storm, and you can see them. If you've ever been up in an airplane, sometimes you can take off, and it looks just like this right here. After you get up there a little bit, all of a sudden you just break through, and it's blue sky, and the sun's shining, and you look down, and there's that storm underneath. That is a cool sight, I'm telling you. I mean, that sun pops out there. That reminds you, you know, the sun is still shining right now. Amen. Sun's still shining right now. So uh, he he got him like this. He's got the storm here, and he's got this one plane flying here at at uh, uh, thirty thousand feet, and he's got another plane flying here at at uh, twenty thousand feet, and he's got another plane, and he's got it all under control. And his preacher said, "He's what's that guy there?" He said he had some of them under the storm. He had some of them above the storm, and he had some of them in the storm. And that guy was just sitting there navigating that whole bunch right through all of that. That priest said, I like to shout at my head off. He said, hallelujah. Thank God, people. That's, that's great news, y'all. Are you listening to me? That's great news. God in heaven this morning has got a big old screen. He's got some of us under the storm. He's got some of us just coming out of the storm. He's got some of us above the storm. He's got some of us in the storm. But he's up there and he's in charge and he's in control. And you can trust your father that he's going to take care of us one way or another. You've got to realize that, the, the, that God is in control. Number two, let me say this. You know what a storm will teach you? When you go through a storm, you realize what's really important. What's really important. You know what they did here in this chapter? When that boat started going like this, about ready to fall and go in the water, they took, man, we don't need that. Throw it out. Man, we don't need that. Throw it out. Man, we don't need that. Throw it out. You think you need all this stuff but when that storm comes, you'll get rid of a lot of stuff that you thought you needed, and you'll realize what's really important. Let me illustrate like this. When those people evacuated, uh, all them people evacuated down there on the East Coast and uh, South Carolina, and, and especially North Carolina, when they said, get out of town, get out of town, um, uh, Miss Millie said they, they told them, y'all to evacuate in Marion yesterday. <laughs> you didn't, did you? <laughs> uh, uh, Roy will take care of you, don't worry They called, uh, DSS called the house Wanted to know if we had a flood plan Because we got these kids They thought old Frankie back there might have to, have to swim out And uh, they said, you got a flood plan? I said, look, if it floods at my house Morgan will be underwater uh, The hill we live in I said, I think we're going to be alright as far as flood goes <laughs> Tree might fall on us But uh, uh, I, I heard them telling about that Getting their stuff out And when they, when they started getting their stuff out uh, imagine now, imagine now, you get, you get three hours, get out, get out, get out, get out. You go through the house and you get what's important. I mean, they got what they had to have, hope they got their Bible, they got the kids, got grandma out of the spare room. I, did you hear about that guy? This is awful. I hope this ain't true. They said that a guy on TV, they said that a guy hated that he had to leave his daddy behind and brought his cat. I hope that ain't true. I, I hope, maybe that's just a joke. I hope and pray that ain't true. Uh, <laughs> we got a problem right here this morning. I'm glad y'all are sitting up here at the front where you can hit the altar. Right now. You're welcome. You owe me $5 for that peanut. I preached him under conviction. Did you say he would save the cat before he'd save you? Jim. Slim Jim would save the cat. But, but anyway... He'd say, bless God, get out the own self. You're a grown person. But anyway, you get what's important. You get what's important, y'all. You get what's important. I mean, look, if a flood's coming to your house, you don't go in there and say, man, I really need my couch, and I want that microwave, and, I'll, and leave Grandma in the back room. I hope you don't. Never know about our generation, do you? But you know what? And listen, the same thing is true in the storms of life. When you're going through a storm, the last, I guess, I don't know, maybe it's not. When my mother passed away, went home to be the Lord. Been six years ago now. Around my, listen, because what's really important. I moved my car, I got a, I had, put me a carport across my driveway a year ago. And man, there's big trees all around it. So yesterday I thought, I'm going to move them cars. And I moved my cars over here and let them sit in the rain. 
because I thought a tree going to fall on that carport. And it might. Might be down when I get home. I don't know. Hope not. But you know what? If it come right down to it, and that house was caving in, I'd get her, I'd get Ethan, I'd get Frankie, I'd get Marty, I'd get everybody. I'm going to say, let's get out. People, let storms come in our life to let us know what's really important. You know what's really important? Each other. You know what's really important? Husbands and wives and kids. That's what's really important. We get all this junk in our lives. We think, oh, this is important. I got to do this. I got to have this. I got to have this. I got to have that. You know what God will do? He'll let a storm come in your life to realize that house, that car, that job, that money is not as important as your family is. You realize what's really important. Tell you what I read when the Titanic went down. I, I, it wasn't like that movie. I didn't watch, but a part of that made me sick. I don't know what you'd like about seeing purple body people floating around. But some people just really get into stuff like that. And I've seen, part, it was 20 years ago, whenever that was, and uh, they said when that thing was going out, and imagine, it didn't have music playing, and you wasn't sitting in a soft chair. There was people screaming and pushing and getting on them lifeboats and pushing the other way. And they said a man went in there and grabbed three oranges. And there's a, there's a, a chest of money right there. Listen. A chest of money right here. And he picked up three oranges. You know why? Because a storm makes you realize what's really important. What's really important. And it ain't money. And it ain't belongings. And it's not a car. I've heard people say, well, I'm not losing my car. I don't care if I have to work every Sunday and never come to it. Listen, one of these days a storm will come to your life and you'll realize what's really important. It's coming. Storms come to everybody. Storms come everywhere. Well, I've got I don't know how many texts people say, are y'all all right? Are y'all all right? I said, look, we live in the mountains. We, we don't have hurricanes in the mountains. I mean, we might get a touch, a little, little bit of one, but the mountains surround it. We're going to be fine. But sooner or later, storm comes to everybody. If it ain't a hurricane, it'll be a snow blizzard. If it ain't a snow blizzard, it'll be something. Thank God for the mountains. Hallelujah. But listen, brother, you, you realize what's really important. People wasn't on there loading up the couch and the dishwasher and, and, and leaving their kids in the back room. Realize what's important. Number three, and I'm done. You know what a storm does? It makes you realize you can't stop it. All you can do is prepare. You can't stop it. The governor of North Carolina come on. He said, all we can do is prepare. All we can do is prepare. Well, he can't stop it. If every leader in the world got together and the United Nations got all their forces together and every airplane and every tank and every bomber and went against that storm, you know what it would do? Blow them in the ocean. Can't stop it. You can't stop it. There's some things coming in your life that you can't stop. Yeah, I mean, you just can't do it. It's coming no matter what. Are you listening? People were literally running from these things. Uh, and the people that didn't paid a price. They paid a price. Let me tell you something this morning. Peace is not the absence of a storm. Peace is being calm in the midst of a storm. In other words, you can't say, well, one of these days everything's going to be all right. My husband's going to straighten up. My wife's going to do better. My kids are going to do better. We'll get the house paid for. One of these days everything's going to be all right. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. Everything ain't never going to be all right in this world. If you come out of one storm, you go in another. Come out of one storm, you go in another. Come out of one storm, you go in another. But I'll tell you what you can do. You can have peace in the midst of the storm. There's a man one time said he, he commissioned these artists, and he said, I want you to draw me. Are y'all cold? Look like you're freezing. Sorry. I'll, I'll, we'll work on that. Maybe it's a little too cool in here this morning, but um, where were your toes? Uh, do I get through here in just a minute? But anyway, he said, these artists, he said, I want you to paint a picture of peace. And this artist turned in this picture, and it was all the sunset and the, the flowers, and everything was wonderful. He said, that's peace. It's not nah, it really what I wanted. And another artist painted a picture. And he painted this big old picture and the sky was black and a big old flash of lightning was coming down through there and rain was pouring. And he said, and over here on the fence post, there was a little bird, like a little sparrow. And he's sitting there just a chirping away like this. And there's one little hole there and, a, and a, a sunlight ray was coming right down shining on that little bird right there. 
And he said, that little bird didn't have a care in the world. He didn't worry about it. He knew everything was going to be all right. He said, now that's peace right there. The whole world blowing up all around you. Listen, when you can walk in the emergency room, I mean, when you can walk in the, in a divorce court, when you can walk in a, a funeral home, when you can walk in a place and brother, you got the peace of God down inside you when everything's going to pieces around you, that's the peace of God right there. That's the peace that only the Lord can give. Listen, if you'll do right, if you'll do right and serve God and live right, when the storm comes, you'll have a peace that passeth all understanding. And it's coming. It's coming. Just like this one came, one's coming for you. I'll say a couple of things here and I'm done. The storms of life. Now, none of us in here, I heard the Derek talking about it in Sunday school, was talking about uh, as we get older and time goes faster, time, time comes to die. I mean, it's coming for everybody. You, you understand that, right? You understand? Everybody in here understand. I don't care how healthy you are, you have an appointment with death. And if Jesus don't come in our lifetime, you are going to die. I am going. I mean, it ain't if, it's when. So when you're laying on that hospital bed and everything seems like it's gone wrong and you don't know which way to turn, that thins when you need the peace of God when the storms of life surround you. They said one time there's a ship caught in a bad storm out in the ocean and um, there was this guy scared to death down, down in his little room. Man, he was scared. And he said he... Said he um, run up on the deck and he looked out on the deck and there was the old captain. And the old captain, his he had his ha wet rain suit on and his face looked like leather where he'd been out in that rain and sun all his life and he had a hold of that stern and he had a calm look on his face just driving right through there. And he said, when I saw the captain taking care of this ship, I went back and I could lay down and rest. And I'm telling you this morning, people, I'm telling you this morning, the storms of life are coming to your, and you know what you need to do? You need to realize the captain has got this thing under control. And you, you know what your job is? Do right. That's your job. Now, if you do wrong, you are asking to get trouble in your life. But if you'll do right, the captain will pilot your ship right on through the storm. You know how I know I'm, I can die right? Because Jesus died for me. The Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Jesus of the Bible. He's the Jesus of the Old Testament. He's the Jesus of the New Testament. He's a, Jew, he's a Jesus for the Jew. He's a Jesus for the Gentile. He's a Jesus for the, 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 the people from any color, race, planet, of the, or country in the world. He's the Jesus for everybody. And the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross one day. They put nails in his hands, nails in his feet. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. You know what he was doing there? He was paying the price for my sin and your sin so that when death comes, I can have peace and I can say, all right, he'll hold my hand as over death's river I go. I like them old song that says, Lord, keep me safe till the storm passes by. I like the song we sang a while ago. He's a shelter in the time of storm. I like the one they sing. He's the eye of the storm. And we are going through storms of life, but the Lord Jesus Christ is our rock right in the middle of that storm. I don't know what storm you're going through this morning. You may be here this morning and everything be going great in your life. You ought to thank God for it because it ain't going to stay sick over a loved one or over a doctor's report like I talked about a minute ago. Storm. I shelter. In the time of storm. Let's stand. Let's stand this morning and bow our heads for prayer, please. Every head bow. Every eye close. I'm going to her to come to the piano, please. And we'll not we'll not have any singing. I just want to pray with you before I let you go this morning. I just want to pray with you. I'll ask you a question before we leave. This morning, while our heads are bowed. While our eyes are closed, preacher, I'm 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 going through a storm. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I'm I'm in the storm. Please pray for me. God bless you. God bless you. Hands going up all over the building. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. 
Some of y'all, I know you're scorned. Some of them, you don't. It don't matter. The Lord does. The Lord does. Anyone else? Preacher, pray for me. I'm going, to go, I'm going through a storm. I need prayer. God bless you. Maybe there's someone here this morning say, Pastor, I don't know the Lord. I don't know that I have Jesus with me. I'll tell you how you can know. The Bible said all is sin and come short of the glory of God. The Bible said that Jesus Christ died for your sins so that when it comes your time to die, you can walk right through that storm and he'll hold your hand. Maybe right there where you sit. Some's already come to the altar. You want to come pray right now? Come on. This is our invitation. If you're here this morning, you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. This would be a good time to do it right now. Just say, dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've sinned. I'm sorry for my sins, God. And right now, the best way I know how, I trust Jesus Christ and what he did for me on the cross to save my soul. If you'll do that and mean it, the Bible said that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall, shall be saved. Will you do that today? Will you do that today? You can. You can if you will. God will bless you if you will. Heavenly Father, I pray right now for that one or those here today, Lord, who need you so bad. God, that you would touch and speak to their heart. I pray for that one here this morning that may be going through a storm. Please, Lord, bless them. Just like that storm's raging outside, that's the way things are in their life. Everything's upside down. Everything's all to pieces. Everything seems like it's getting blown away. Everything's tore up. Everything's a mess. God, please help them to realize that you can help them to go through this storm if they'll trust you and do the right thing. We'll thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. 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 So I'm still praying over here this morning. Amen. I don't know what your storm is. I really don't. But the Lord does. And he'll take you through it. You say, oh, preacher, you ain't talking to me. Everything great in my life. Hallelujah. You better enjoy it while you can. It ain't going to stay that way. Storms are coming. God help you. God bless you. And as you get older, they come more often and more severe. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Learn how to deal with it. Be positive. Put the Lord first. He'll bless you for it. Okay? Amen. All right. Now, please be careful getting out of here. we got a lot of kids uh, going to be moving around out there. And be back this season. You ain't got nothing else to do, have you? <laughs> um, uh, uh, come on back here this evening, six o'clock. I think it'll be fine. And uh, we'll we'll have church tonight, six o'clock, come praying. Bring somebody with you. And I've got something different I'm gonna preach tonight. I believe it'll be a really help to you. And so, uh, Lord, don't change my mind. So don't miss that, okay? All right, let's bow our head. We'll be dismissed in prayer. Fellowship with each other. Be friendly before you leave. Um, Brother Derek, how about you dismiss us? Everybody fellowship.